Well, welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah. I am a pregnancy and postpartum corrective exercise specialist and the owner and trainer of Core Vitality Fitness. Today, I'm here to talk to you about rib flare. Now, you may know that you have rib flare or you may not. This is just a great thing to work on with your alignment, which is going to help prove, improve and maximize your core and pelvic floor workouts. Now, rib flare is very common after pregnancy. Our rib cage starts to expand during pregnancy. I'm actually currently pregnant, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna have tons of pregnancy workouts and I'm gonna go through all my favorite things for pregnancy, postpartum rehab, and everything in between. So if you're not already subscribing, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel for that. But today, focus on that rib flare. So there are two different types of rib flare. You might have this after pregnancy or this might be something that was beforehand just from extreme overactivation, your workouts, typically of your obliques that are pulling that rib down. So let's go over the two different types of rib flares. So the first type of rib flare is a forward flare. Now that might be hard to see whenever you're standing, but a really good telltale sign if you have that forward rib flare is when you lay down on your mat. We'll find that in just a second, but you can't pull your ribs down to the mat. Why would that be an issue? Well, if you keep that rib cage open and you don't fully close your rib cage down to the mat, you're losing your core work. And we want all of your muscle groups to be able to function properly. And we're putting those muscles on strain and stretch. We want to get everything into alignment. So a lot of times we wanna focus on axial elongation to correct that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. Now, the second type of rib flare could be side to side, meaning either wide or narrow. Now, do you happen to know what a normal angle for your rib flare is? It's actually 90 degrees. So you would measure infrastructural angle right here where your rib cage opens in the center, and you wanna have a normal, normal range. It's about 90 degrees. Now, if you have a wider rib flare out to the side, that's very common with people who have diastasis recti. So that's the separation of your abdominal wall. And you can also cause pelvic floor issues because you're in a constant state of inhalation. You're not getting that full exhale. And we want that full exhale to get that rib cage to close because why we want a full exhale, we also want our core and our pelvic floor to function and fire properly. If you are never getting that full rib cage, that full exhale to get the diaphragm to fire, and then to get the core and the pelvic floor to follow as well, you're just misfiring every time you're doing those workouts. So we really wanna maximize those workouts, not only to progress and get the results that you want physically, but also mentally. We wanna feel good, and our body is in a constant strain and stress if we're never getting that fully full exhale. So it actually also might be messing with your nervous system. We wanna be in that inhale and that exhale to calm our nervous system. You might also notice you might have a shortness of breath. So if you're never getting that full exhale, you can't get a good inhale. So if you're just staying in that and you're not, I can't, I can't inhale again, right? So we want that full inhale and exhale. Now with that outward also comes inward angle. You could have too small of an angle, so less than 90 degrees, and that's typically seen with pelvic floor issues because that's going to put a lot of pressure downward, and it might not just be alignment, but it might be overactive obliques. Your external obliques might be pulling that down a little bit too much, so you want to find balance. So if you are working to close that wider rib cage, you would work on external oblique exercises to get it to close, but you want that nice balance. You always want your muscles to function together as one. One, you don't want one taking over the other. All right, let's go ahead and skip down to the mat. I'm going to grab the mat, meet me on the floor, and let's go over some movements and some ways to figure out what kind of rib flare you might have. All right, we're on the floor. We've got a mat. Let's go ahead and lay it down. All right, so great way to find this is on the floor, right? If we're having a hard time finding that forward rear rib flare where we're standing, you can always stand up against the wall, but honestly, I like the mat better because we have gravity helping us instead of hindering us and pulling us forward or pulling us back or whatever we're in for a position that's not a neutral position for our body. So coming down on the floor, you can just rest your head, make sure you move your hair clip. If you have a hair clip like me, just put your feet flat, flat on the floor. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate 
a breath if I had a Y, I mean a forward rib flare. So right here I'm flaring on my ribs. You can see I can slide a palm underneath between my back and the mat and just watch my breath. And I'm going to try to do a core engagement and watch what happens. I'm going to inhale. And exhale. Can't really get a full complete exhale. I can't fully contract my abs and I have this arch in my spine. I'm also breathing more into my head, neck and shoulders. Now what watch what happens when I pull my rib cage down to the floor. And notice I didn't tuck my hips under. It's another thing. You don't want to tuck your hips under. You want to keep that length, that axial elongation between all the way from the pubic bone all the way up to the head. We're laying down on the floor. That's where you want to find that flat as you can get it, that length. You want to pull those abs in and up. That's a whole nother thing for another video. I'll get into that about core contraction, but let's just go over the breath. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead here. All right, so let me try it again. And now watch my breath and my core contraction. See if it's even stronger now. Do you see how I was able to get so much stronger of a core contraction and I wasn't breathing into my necks and I was able to get a full 360 breath, which I will then also go over um, in another segment about breath work, right? We've got so much to go over, but let's just focus on that rib cage. But I'm able to get that 360 breath all the way around, get that full core contraction, getting the rib to close down and I'm not feeling any pressure downward. I'm not even feeling pressure upward and I'm not feeling like I'm putting strain on my core core, I'm able to fully engage and ground myself to support my body. That is what you want. All right. So if you are struggling with that rib flare while you're here, just see if you can align your body, maybe do a couple of pelvic tilts front and back. If you have a hard time pulling your rib down to the mat and see what it feels like when you can pull that rib down with an extreme tuck and then maybe try to keep your palm there and then lengthen and relax your glutes to get that long length on the floor. That way you can really feel that rib coming back. All right, so now let's go over the wide. So say you are wider or more narrow. So this is the perfect place to find it because this is where you can relax your abs the most. If you're sitting up, your abs will still engage because it's holding you up, supporting your spine, supporting your body. So this is where you want to check that infrastructural angle and you can feel around for your rib. You can grab like a pin or you can use your hands if you're not sure. Um, the pin is going to definitely be your telltale sign because when you stand up and look in the mirror, you'll see that 90 degree angle or not. Um, if not, you could just use your hands just right underneath your rib cage. See how I'm feeling right north of my rib cage. I found my rib cage and I'm going to place my palm there. I place both my palms in a little angle and then I would see if it was a 90 degree angle or wider. So let's say we had that wide infrastructural angle, which we talked about was going to exacerbate that core separation. Now, what can we do to improve that? Well, you can lie on to your side. So let's roll into our side. You could always place either your hand or a towel, something underneath your head to support it if it feels more comfortable. All right, I'm just gonna lay down on my side. Actually, I lied. I'm gonna grab a towel and I will be right back. Just kidding, I found a yoga block. Yoga blocks work too. <laughs> so place a yoga block right here on this side. You could grab a pillow, anything would work, whatever you have nearby. My fitness training is all about whatever's the closest to you and the easiest to grab, work with that. All right, so you're gonna come onto your side and you're gonna stack your legs and notice what happened when I pulled my knees together instead of back. Did you see that little weight shift when I pull my top knee forward? So you always wanna make sure those knees are stacked. That's kind of a good indicator that you're gonna get that, again, axial elongation and that full core contraction. So we're mimicking the same position we were in in our back. And that's kind of something you always want to do in your workouts. Just keep in mind, you want to work out on all levels where you're standing, laying on your back, and also on your side, trying to find that axial elongation, which is going to give you your biggest core support. So in order to get our rib cage to close and be in proper alignment, we want to make sure the rest of our body is in alignment. So there should be a little bit of space between your abs and the mat and a little bit, keep a little bit of tension in your core. Now I'm not gripping, I'm not over gripping by any means, but by naturally pulling that hip down and bringing that knee forward so they're stacked, you'll notice you'll have a little bit of core tension there. And that's what we want to look for. Now, if we have that wide rib cage flare, we can always take that top hand. So we have our rib secured to the floor right here. It's not going to go anywhere. We're going to take that top rib and we're going to inhale. 
And then our exhale, we're just going to gently bring our palm forward to encourage it to close. You do not have to push hard with this at all. I am barely pushing at all. I'm just, my hand is just there as a frame of reference for my brain. So that's kind of your indicator when you're doing a lot of your workouts, by the way. Um, you shouldn't force anything, just a light touch, right? If you have a shoulder shrug, just a light touch of that finger naturally pulls that shoulder down. Same effect with your rib cage. Let's try it again. Nice big inhale. And then exhale and wrap and pull it forward. And you might feel those abs engage a little bit more than you're probably used to, right? Because you've been in that wider state with your rib cage and now you can get that nice closure and you can feel your abs control and contract a little bit more. Now you'd want to do this on both sides. If you want to do that now, let you could pause the video, do like five on one side and then flip around five to the other. But really quick, Let's now head on to a narrow rib cage, an exercise we could do really quick with a narrow rib. Okay, so one of the things that could cause a narrowing of your rib cage as opposed to a flare could be overactive obliques. So we're now going to come standing and we're going to do a nice oblique stretch. You will need a wall. So find um, a wall with like a little door wedge. I'll bring you over to my staircase and we'll see how that works um, because I've got a little space right there where I can grab my hand around where a door frame works really great. Actually, I lied, I might try my door frame. You know, I'm gonna try both angles. Surprise, you'll see which one I end up with. <laughs> Surprise, okay, we ended up with my door frame. Um, that was much easier than the side wall. Um, hopefully you can't see into my garage and all the stuff that's in there. But let's go over a nice oblique stretch. Now me, I already have a tendency to have an overactive oblique on my right side, so I do this exercise all the time on my right. But I'm going to face you, make it easier, and do my left side stretch right now. Now, so you want to find a door wedge. So like, I mean, a door frame. Words are hard sometimes. Door frame. All right, so I'm going to be stretching my left side, so which means my left leg is going to be in front. I'm going to grab onto the door frame. I'll do the stretch first, and I'll pull the mic back so I can talk you through it. But just watch really quick. So I'm going to have my left leg front. All right, so my left leg is front, my right arm has the door, my left arm's gonna go over, and then I'm going to lean and pull over to the left. And you're gonna breathe, you're gonna breathe into that beautiful stretch. You can come out of it and then go back into it whenever you feel ready. I'll turn to the other side so you can see a little back view. So now I've got my right leg in front, so I'm gonna stretch my right oblique, right leg in front, left arm, and then my right arm's gonna go overhead, and I'm gonna pull off. Oh yeah, I needed that to the right, thank you. Um, and you're just gonna breathe into it Hold it about 10 seconds and carefully release. You can start in smaller increments, especially if you are really tight. And that's going to help open up and free that core, which will free the ab and keep you from over gripping. Um, this is a great thing to just do also to your warm up if you notice that you are really tight. And you great thing to incorporate into your warm up before you even start activating your core. That way you don't have that tendency to over grip in the beginning. All right, let's head back to the mat. All right, hopefully you found that um, helpful for figuring out the difference between the different types of rib flare, also how to correct the rib flare, and just like a basis starter point for your core work and your rehab. Um, like I said, pregnancy, it's very common for that rib flare to start to increase. Um, the baby has to go somewhere, and those ribs need to expand. Those floating ribs at the bottom need to expand so that your organs have somewhere to go for the baby to go. Um, I myself am actually pregnant, so if you're not already following, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, I will be giving a lot more content coming up. Uh, with pregnancy workouts. So we're going to follow my whole pregnancy journey and all the way through my postpartum care and also be providing information about my favorite products that I'm going to use throughout my pregnancy and postpartum. And I'll show you how I use this as well. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like and follow and I'll see you guys soon for more videos.